we're given the quadratic function f of x equals x squared minus four x minus five. We're asked to find the vertex, the vertical intercept, also called the y-intercept, the horizontal intercepts, also referred to as the x-intercepts. Then we'll graph the function on the calculator, and then graph the function in our homework, and then finally place a point on the graph at the vertex and the vertical and horizontal intercepts. Before we find the vertex, though, we do want to identify the values of a, b, and c from the quadratic function, where a would be the coefficient of the x squared term, and since we have x squared or one x squared, a is equal to one, b is the coefficient of the x term, which would be negative four, and c is the constant, which would be negative five. Now to find the vertex, we'll use this formula here, where the x coordinate of the vertex is negative b divided by two a, and the y coordinate is f of negative b divided by two a, meaning we'll evaluate the function at the x value of negative b divided by two a. So let's first find the x coordinate, or the x coordinate is equal to negative b divided by two a. This would also give us the equation of the axis of symmetry. So here we have negative and then negative four divided by two times one, which would be four divided by two or two which means the vertex has an x-coordinate of positive two, and now to find the y-coordinate, we'll evaluate the function at two. So f of two would be two squared minus four times two minus five. This would be four minus eight minus five, which is equal to negative nine. So the vertex has coordinates two comma negative nine. Now let's find the vertical intercept, also referred to as the y-intercept. To find the vertical intercept, the x-coordinate is always zero, and then we find f of zero to find the y-coordinate. So for the vertical intercept, the x-coordinate will always be zero, or the input variable. And now to find the y-coordinate, we evaluate the function at x equals zero. So we'd have zero squared minus four times zero minus five, Notice how this simplifies to negative five, which is just the value of c, the constant. And the vertical intercept will always be c when we have a quadratic function in this form here. So the vertical intercept is the point zero comma negative five. Number three, we want to find the horizontal intercepts. The horizontal intercepts occur where the function is equal to zero. And it's possible to have either zero, one, or two horizontal intercepts. Notice that we set the function equal to zero, we have the equation zero equals x squared minus four x minus five. Notice how this does factor into two binomial factors. Where we have x and x, the factors of x squared. The second terms in the binomial factors would be the factors of negative five that add to negative four. And since negative five times positive one is negative five, and the sum is negative four, we'd have x minus five and x plus one. Notice how this product here is equal to zero when x equals five or when x equals negative one, which means in this case we have two horizontal intercepts. One of the horizontal intercepts is the point five comma zero, and the second horizontal intercept is the point negative one comma zero. Next we're asked to graph the function on the calculator, so let's review that. For the first step, we'll enter the function by pressing y equals, clear any old functions, and we'll press x squared minus four x minus five. Notice how they are giving us the window, so we'll press the window key. The x values go from negative six to positive 10, so negative six, enter, 10, enter. Press enter again to y minimum, the y values go from negative 14 to positive five. Now let's go ahead and press graph. And notice how our parabola does open up, and that's because a is equal to one, which is greater than zero. We can use a table feature to find more points on the graph. Before we press table though, let's press second window for table set. Notice how the table is starting at zero, it's increasing by one. Let's change the independent to auto, 
so we can scroll through the table. So we'll press enter when it's on automatic, and now we'll press second graph, and now we can scroll up and down to find additional points on the graph if we wanted to. And now for step five, we want to graph the function by plotting the highest point or lowest point. In our case, it'll be the lowest point, which is the vertex, and one other point on the parabola. Before we do this, though, let's enter the vertex, which was in parentheses two comma negative nine. The vertical intercept was the point zero comma negative five. And we had two horizontal intercepts. One was five comma zero, and the other was negative one comma zero. Again, to graph our parabola on the coordinate plane, we'll first select the parabola tool here, then click on the vertex, which again is two negative nine here. And then click on one other point. Let's go ahead and click on the vertical intercept, which we know is zero negative five here. So this is the graph of our parabola. So we've now completed one through five, and then number six says place a point on the graph at the vertex, the vertical intercept, and the horizontal intercepts. To do this, we'll select the point tool, click on the vertex first. Next, we'll click on the vertical intercept, which we did earlier here. And again, we have two horizontal intercepts, one here at negative one, and one here at positive five. And that's it for this question. I hope you found this helpful.